Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for part 2 of how to invest in stocks for beginners. We will talk about types of brokerage accounts, how to set up an account, robo-advisor, and types of trades. So be sure to watch the entire video to learn more on what is investing and how to invest. So now, let's go through the various types of stock brokerage accounts you may open. The first is the taxable account, which is the traditional account most people would think about when they hear of a stock brokerage account. You must pay taxes on whatever gains you earn. So if you purchase a stock for $20, it rises to $28 and then sell it for an $8 profit. You must pay taxes on that $8. The tax rates you pay will be determined by how long you keep your investment. So we'll discuss short-term versus long-term profits sooner. And taxable accounts will allow you to buy and sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and other investments inside the taxable accounts. There is also the cash versus margin account to consider. So with the cash account, you buy assets using money that you put into the account. But the margin account allows you to borrow the money through a broker to purchase investments, which, as you can probably imagine, is a lot riskier. Most individuals will have many taxable accounts, and I'll teach you how to put one up in just a few minutes. Apart from taxable accounts, there are also retirement accounts, which have the added benefit of being tax-favored. Investments in these types of accounts are exempt from capital gains taxes, which lowers the amount of taxes you must pay. Generally, the government wants you to be able to retire with money. As such, they give us these retirement accounts, which are truly tax advantage. And therefore, for everyone watching this video, if you should open up a retirement account. The Roth IRA, Standard IRA, SEP, Solo 401k, and 401k are all examples of retirement accounts. Contribution restrictions apply since they don't like you to deposit all of your funds into these tax advantage accounts. So, with Roth and Standard IRAs, you're only limited to deposit $6,000 each year, or $7,000 if you're over 50 years old. There are also several roles with SEP. We're not going to go into a lot of depth about Solo 401k and regular 401k accounts, but with all of these tax advantage accounts, there are withdrawal regulations, so you can't easily withdraw the funds until you're retired. However, if you really need to, you can with a fine, which is good because it encourages you to invest for the long term. Aside from these two accounts, you got your HSA or health savings account, which is also a tax advantage healthcare savings account. You have a 500 plus college savings plan to choose, which is funded by the government and allows you to use the funds in this account to pay for educational expenses. You do have your custodial brokerage account if you wish to invest before 18 years old. And there are also robo-advisors, which are automated, algorithm-driven investing platforms that perform all of the investing for you. This video cannot go into detail about each of these accounts, but I will show you how to create a regular taxable account. This will allow you to quickly buy and sell stocks, and while there are many different platforms available, I'd recommend utilizing an app-based brokerage for starters. I'm talking about Webo, Etoro, Robinhood, and Wealthfront. They're extremely simple to set up, most of the apps don't require a deposit to set up an account and typically have highly user-friendly interfaces. So go ahead and set up a free account. I strongly advise you to do so. Basically, the application is incredibly simple. It will only take you a few minutes. And all you have to do is submit your personal details such as your social security number, name, address, and date of birth, and other details. It will also require you to enter a username and password, 
as well as authenticate your identity. Once submitted, you will wait for your application to be accepted, which is typically very quick. And then, you will fund your account with money through your bank transfer. And then you will be able to begin trading stocks. I recommend that you join up using your desktop. It makes your registration easier, but you can also join up using your phone. Install the app, sign in, and from there start trading straight from your smartphone. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about investing. Let's return to the video. Now I'll discuss robo-advisors, which are an excellent approach to invest. Never heard of a robo-advisor? That is an investing platform that utilizes software to invest your money automatically, which is ideal for individuals who want to invest more passively but don't have time or energy to actively study stocks, review their portfolios, and buy and sell. And in my opinion, the greatest platform for this is Wealthfront, a robo-advising platform that's very great for newbies since their expert-built system invests for you. And they'll even offer you $20 to get started if you use referral links. You simply need to deposit $500 to get started. It will only take you less than 5 minutes, and you must be at least 18 years old. So what exactly are robo-advisors? As previously said, they assist you in investing your money by using automated software that creates a customized portfolio for you depending on your risk tolerance. More significantly, they're like a far less expensive form of a financial advisor in that they create you a diversified portfolio tailored to your specific requirements, then manage the rebalancing for you and ensure you stay within your risk tolerance. Wealthfront, and this is not sponsored, is currently suitable for anyone who wishes to be a passive investor and only invest for the long term. This can be safer than being an active trader who is always attempting to time the market. Wealthfront and other robo-advisors are also beneficial because they frequently demand less cash to begin with than a real financial advisor and have reduced annual management fees. In this instance, the fee is only 0.25% as compared to the 1% or so you may receive from a human advisor. And what I like best about Wealthfront is that they offer automated tax loss harvesting, which happens when they take advantage of market falls to assist you in minimizing your taxes at the end of the year. Tax loss harvesting is incredibly beneficial during times of market volatility and can actually add up over time. But performing it yourself is extremely manual and needs so much effort, which is why most people just do it once every few months. Whereas Wealthfront checks for tax loss harvesting possibilities every single day, indicating you could save money on taxes and have more money to reinvest. This is one of few robo-advisor platforms that I suggest to everyone, particularly if you want to build your money passively. You may invest in low-cost exchange-traded funds or ETFs and create custom portfolios by selecting from a wide range of funds. You may also create retirement accounts such as Roth and standard IRAs, as well as college savings programs, joint accounts, 401k rollovers, and more. They only charge a 0.25% yearly management fee as previously stated. And if you want to receive your $20 for creating and financing your first taxable investing account today, you may use referral links from your friends or family who are using this platform. And it's simply a fantastic and underappreciated method to invest. Now, let's discuss the various types of trades you may execute starting with a market order. A market order enables you to buy and sell instantly, making it the simplest and quickest type of trading that ensures execution of your order but does not guarantee your execution price. What will happen is that it will buy or sell approximately or at the current execution price, which is the price you see on the screen. 
Now, we'll assume that the previous trade price isn't always the price at which a market order will be filled. So if a stock is now selling at roughly $25, a market buy will get you that stock at about that price, but it isn't guaranteed. The larger the capital company, the more probable it will be able to fulfill at that particular price. And with such large cap companies, because trading occurs all the time, your order will execute immediately. Another famous type of order is the limit order, which allows you to buy or sell at a certain price. Essentially, the order will only complete if the stock reaches that price. A purchased limit order, for example, will only execute only at limit price or lower, but a sell limit order will only execute at the limit price or higher. I realize it seems a little confusing, but let's check an example and it'll make a lot more sense. Let's assume you want to purchase stock and it's now trading for roughly $10. If you set a buy limit order of $9, it will immediately buy the stock if the stock price falls to $9 or below. If the stock never falls to $9 or lower, your order will not complete and you will not buy the stock. Usually, you'll set the limit order close to or just slightly below the current trading price so that the order is very possible to execute since the price does swing time to time. So let's assume if the price is now $12, and you put a limit order of $8. The stock would have to fall to $8 in order for the limit order to execute, which is highly impossible for a short period of time. As a result, while it guarantees a set price, it does not guarantee the exact buying or selling of it. Another scenario is if you place a sell limit order of $20. It will only sell the stock if the stock price is $20 or above. So with that stock valued at $18, if we place a sell limit order of $21, the stock price would have to rise $3 in order to sell. We will not sell the shares if it does not reach the $21 market price. So the simplest order is a market order since it ensures that you will purchase the stock. However, if you want to go a little more involved, you can put a limit order to ensure the price that you are paying. Another type of order is a stop order, which is used to buy or sell whenever the price rises or falls over a certain level. Whenever a stock price is achieved, a stop order transforms into a limit or market order. For example, a buy stop order is placed at the share price just above current market price. This is used to minimize losses or protect gains on a stock that you've sold short. In other words, it is a method that lets you gain from an increase in the price of a stock by putting an order in advance. So let's say a stock is currently trading at $90, and you placed a buy stop order at $96 if the price rises above $96, indicating that there is some upward movement that will trigger that buy order. And then you can set your sell stop order, which is entered at a stock price lower than the current stock price. And this is simply used to minimize losses or protect gains. So if we hold $90 stock and you put a sell stop order at $85, the stock will promptly sell if the price falls below $85. This will make your trading life simple since you're confident that you will not lose so much money or you will gain money that you wanted. So that's it for this video. See you in the next part. Hope you have learned something from this video. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for you to be updated on our latest videos. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more and be more financially literate? Click on the next videos we have in our channel, showing on the screen right now.